Engineering and Science. Today we have expert Dr. Sucheta. She is working as associate professor in the uh, Department of Applied Sciences and at the University of Technology. She is uh, she has done PhD in mathematics and she has got a rich experience of 30 years of teaching and research in, in, uh, in the areas associated with mathematics, especially in the area of algebra and coding theory. And she is the, uh, guiding PhD thesis also in this area and uh, written several papers of, at national and international level in these areas. So uh, I request her to kindly engage a session on numerical analysis techniques for research and she will also highlight the major areas of research which is in the field of mathematics and they are very much sought after to take up the PhD work also. So I request her to kindly engage the session. Good morning, everybody. Uh, mathematics uh, is an area which everybody thinks uh, he has studied enough of it. When my students come to me uh, in first year engineering, they tell me, ma'am, why are you teaching us mathematics? We have had enough of it for the last 12 years, and now please teach us some engineering. Uh, they studied till 12th and they say we have had enough of it. I've studied mathematics till my PhD. After that, for the last 30 years or so, I'm teaching. And still I feel I don't know enough mathematics. Uh, and I, I think by the time I finish my talk today, you will also realize that nobody can know enough of mathematics. It is such a vast area. Broadly, we can classify mathematics into two categories, pure mathematics and applied mathematics. Pure mathematics uh, is uh, the study of mathematics for its own sake, by which the subject gets enriched. And applied mathematics is, as the name suggests, obviously it is the application-oriented mathematics when we apply it to various fields. Under pure mathematics, uh, we get the basic subjects like analysis, algebra, complex variables, functional analysis, major theory, and things like that. And under applied uh, mathematics, uh, we have uh, partial differential equations, ordinary differential equations, then optimization, numerical methods, and many more areas. And for research, uh, these days, uh, it is important to work in teams which involve mathematicians which are working from the pure side and also mathematicians which are working from the applied science. It is better if we have interdisciplinary team uh, which involves uh, uh, biologists, which involves uh, engineers, etc. Uh, as a researcher and as a person who is guiding research, I'm facing a little difficulty because my student, she is working in coding theory and she is looking for applications in of coding into DNA. So DNA coding, so we need a person from biology to understand what is DNA and how does uh, modeling is to be done uh, for the DNA codes. Numerical analysis uh, is a vast uh, sub area of mathematics. There is a lot of uh, pure mathematics which is at the root of numerical analysis, though it is a, a practical aspect of mathematics. Formally, it is the study of algorithms that use numerical approximation for, for the problems of mathematical analysis. And as the talk unfolds, you will see that there are varied types of problems for which numerical approximation is being used nowadays. And you'll be surprised to know that this subject, numerical analysis, is not a very new subject. In contrast to optimization and operations research, which are overlapping with the field of numerical analysis, 
this is quite important. So this is a Babylonian clay tablet which shows the approximation of the square root of 2. You can see the numbers 1, 24, 51, and 10 written on these number, uh, written on the tablet. And this is uh, in the sexagesimal number system. And square root of 2, or uh, the hypotenuse of a triangle of side 1, is calculated from here by the formula 1 plus 24 by 60 plus 51 by 60 square plus 10 by 60 cube and if you if you calculate up to this then the number that you get is 1.4142196 it is correct up to eight decimal places and this this was long time back i mean 1600 to 1800 years before christ so nearly uh, 4000 years ago they knew this method of approximating square root of so what numerical analysis actually does is uh, it does practical mathematical cal calculations. As you have seen in the last example, we are calculating the hypotenuse of a triangle with the two sides, two perpendicular sides, both equal to 1. Uh, and in this, we are not seeking for exact answers. Uh, primarily because exact answers in most of the practical problems are very difficult to get. So we are concerned with obtaining approximate solutions and of course we'll be maintaining reasonable bounds on the errors. So we'll fix the error. So most of the time we'll be fixing that the, that our answer should be correct up to how many decimal places or it should be correct for this many significant number of digits. So Applications of numerical analysis are in abundance in all fields of engineering and physical sciences. And these days, even the life sciences and arts, they have also adopted certain elements of scientific computations. So here are some applications of uh, numerical analysis. In weather prediction models, advanced numerical methods are required to compute the trajectory of spacecrafts. Again, we need to find the accurate numerical solutions of ordinary differential equations. And then to decide the pricing of airline tickets, to solve assignment problems, to solve the fuel needs of various aircrafts, we need sophisticated optimization algorithms. And uh, then in the insurance companies, again, the actuarial analysis is performed using numerical methods. For cars, uh, the safety of their vehicles is done by uh, the simulations are being done on computers and these simula uh, simulations again are based on solving differential equations numerically in arts in commerce investment funds use tools from all fields of numerical analysis to calculate the values of stock and uh, So these were some of the applications. Uh, now I move to the history of numerical analysis. So as I told earlier, it is not a very recent subject. Linear interpolation was already in use in, uh, in word for more than 2,000 years. What is actually linear interpolation? So if we know some points on a, lean, on a line in the plane or in the space, then uh, if we want to find the intermediate points, we want to find the entire line which will pass through those points or even the line of best fit, uh, as you uh, must have heard, uh, is what we call linear interpolation. So this, this was a 
well known subject and you must have heard about lagrange's interpolation polynomial and this is not a linear interpolation of course lagrange's interpolation polynomial is a uh, polynomial of some degree uh, n and that will depend on the number of points that you are given uh, we have newton's method we have gaussian elimination method Euler's method, etc. So these people, they belong to 16th or 17th century, 18th century. So these people have been working on various algorithms. So algorithms were known much before the advent of modern computers. So these people, they, they found some uh, very nice algorithms, very well written algorithms, and they have analyzed uh, these algorithms for uh, the basic uh, mathematical stability things so th they are well proven algorithms and even today I think to find uh, roots of a equation we will be using Newton Raphson method and every engineer studies these methods the connection is there no? So even uh, when, when these methods uh, were there, so earlier people used to do hand computation. After that, mechanical calculators were developed. And in the 1940s, electronic computers came into picture and which facilitated longer and more complicated calculations and even the accuracy got improved. We could have uh, smaller bounds on errors. So earlier also when we didn't have computers, uh, we had large printed tables which were computed by hand for interpolation. So after the computers took over, still for computer calculations the same interpolation formulas are being used. Uh, as a part of the software algorithms. There's no change in the basic formulas. And the last point I've already mentioned that the field of numerical analysis uh, is uh, much more, uh, it was much more earlier than the advent of modern computers. Though these days it is based on a lot of computer, uh, lo um, Sorry, these days it is based on computers. A lot of numerical analysis subject when we teach to engineering undergraduates, we teach them the computer programs along with it. And in many universities, even the topic of numerical analysis uh, is not just numerical analysis. The subject at various places is called numerical analysis and uh, computing or numerical analysis and C programming or something like that. So there are different names. So computing modern computing and numerical analysis go hand by hand today but definitely this is a subject which is much more older than the computers. So in numerical analysis we have two types of methods. Uh, one are direct methods and another are iterative methods. Direct methods are the ones which compute the solution to a problem in a finite number of steps. You are not getting the, it is, it is again an algorithm and you are doing some steps but after a finite number of steps you get the solution to the problem. And these, uh, these methods will give us precise answer if we are performing in finite precision arithmetic. Now computers these days however uh, precise a computer is, however modern a computer is, it cannot have infinite precision because the computer does not have infinite memory. So real numbers uh, on the line if, if we have the decimal, if we look at the decimal representation of a real number so many, many real numbers have infinite uh, number of points in its decimal representation. We have recurring and we have irrational numbers also. So all real numbers cannot be uh, obtained when we are performing calculations 
in finite precision and all the computers these days however sophisticated it is are based on finite precision and therefore we cannot get very precise answers so what whatever we'll be getting even by direct methods by using the most sophisticated computers also uh, we'll be getting a approximate solution but approximate again I, I could get a solution which is correct up to 100 decimal points or i can get a solution which is correct up to 1000 decimal points so depending upon the accuracy i desire for a particular problem i can get that precision in my output in contrast to the direct methods iterative methods do not terminate in a finite number of steps so we start with an initial guess in these methods and then go on to successively approximate the solution and uh, we'll be getting a series of successive approximations and whose limiting value will converge to the exact solution. Exact means exact here also will not be the exact solution. In some cases we'll get exact, in certain other cases we'll get uh, quite a close approximation. And then uh, we, we'll need a convergence test to check whether a sufficiently accurate solution has been found or not. So these methods, iterative methods, even if uh, we are using infinite precision arithmetic, we may not get uh, a very accurate solution within a finite number of steps. For the direct methods, uh, we, we had the uh, elimination method when we are solving a system of linear equations. For iterative methods, we have newton raphsons method or the bisection method or Jacobi's method. Bisection method and Newton's method are the methods for solving a single equation in one variable and Jacobi's method is there for solving a system of linear equations. So let us consider this problem of solving the equation 3x cubed plus 4 is equal to 28. Now this is a simple equation. So by direct method, how will we be solving it? We'll take 4 on the right hand side. So 3x cubed will be 24. And then we'll divide by 3 on both sides. We'll get x cubed is equal to 8. And then take the cube roots to get x is equal to 2. And if we want, that will be the real solution. And then we'll have uh, 2 omega and 2 omega square as the complex roots of that. The solution is missing from my slide, so I'm sorry for that. Uh, but, you know, this is a simple equation. So the three roots, the three complex roots are 2, 2 omega and 2 omega square, uh, where omega and omega square are the cube roots of unity. But uh, in case uh, I need only the real root, I'll get x is equal to 2 as the solution. I'll discard the complex roots. So this was an easy solution. Uh, okay, but if we are to solve it by an iterative method, let us see how we'll use this. So bisection method, I hope you remember the bisection method to solve uh, an equation of this type. fx is equal to uh, 3x cubed minus 24 and I want to find the uh, roots of this uh, polynomial equation. So I choose the initial values. Uh, so you remember the bisection method, I need to choose two values, A and B, such that a root lies inside these. How will I find A and B first of all? That is a question. So I have to go to my analytical mathematics here. Uh, I'll go to the Descartes rule of science, which says that if there is a zero of a polynomial, uh, lying in the interval A to B, then a and B, if you evaluate the function at A and B, you will get different signs. So what is f of 0? If I evaluate f of 0, I get minus 24. If I evaluate f of 3, then I get a positive number. 3 cube is 27 and 27 into 3, 81 minus 24, that is positive. So at 0, f of 0 is negative. 
f of 3 is positive. So f of x being a polynomial, it is a continuous function and therefore uh, when it is moving from a negative value to a positive value, it must cross the x-axis. So there will be a 0 lying between 0 and 3, 0 of or a root of fx is equal to 0 or a 0 of fx, it will be there lying between a and b. So I just get the initial values 0 and b and I am looking for a solution of fx is equal to 0 in this interval. Okay, and I calculate f of a and f of b that is already there. Okay, so now I go to what? I go to the midpoint of this interval a, b. Midpoint is 1.5. I evaluate f at this midpoint. So f of 1.5, it comes out to be minus 13 point something. Now, f of a is neg uh, negative. f of 1.5 is also negative and f of b is 57 which is positive. So my next solution, so I must have a 0 inside 1.5 and 3. So I discard my point A and replace A by 1.5 now. Because the value at 1.5 of the function is negative, the value at 3 is positive and therefore uh, I will have a solution, a zero of this equation uh, inside the interval 1.5 to 3. Now next step, so it is an iterative method, so I will be repeating these steps. So I, I just take the midpoint of 1.5 and 3 and I get 2.25. I evaluate the function at 2.25 and I get the uh, value 10.17. Now this is positive. So that means what? The value at 2.25 is positive. The value of the function at 1.5 is negative. Therefore, the 0 must lie between 1.5 and 2.25. So I reduce this interval to another half of the interval. So I take 1.5 to 2.25 and then repeat the procedure. Take the midpoint of this interval that is 1.875 and evaluate the function at this point. The value comes out to be negative. Now this, this value is negative at 1.875 and it is positive at 2.25. So I take this interval 1.875 to 2.25 and look for a solution inside this interval. And I take the midpoint of this and get the value as positive. Now this will give me what? I've left the problem here. Now this is a positive value. And I'm getting negative value at 1.875. So I'll have the solution lying between 1.875 and 2. Point, so it, it is started in 2.063, the midpoint. So I will have a zero of the function fx is equal to 3x cubed minus 24, which lies between 1.875 to 2.063. And this way, I, if I continue, you can see I'm getting quite close to the original root x is equal to 2. But with these iterations, I can get as close to 2 as I want to, but I will never be able to get the value 2, though by the direct method, it was a simple problem. So next thing uh, that we need to do in numerical methods is discretization because many a times when we are working with uh, continuous uh, functions uh, it, it is difficult to do the calculations by a machine which is uh, a machine based on discrete mathematics. Computer cannot perform the calculations for a continuous function so we need to uh, discretize uh, our problem and then solve the discrete problem and for the continuous problem we take the solution of the discrete problem as an approximate solution. So here is a problem. So when a car is moving It is moving for two hours 
its speed is varying but we are measuring the speed at three instants this is uh, what we call uh, okay we are we are taking the data at three intervals at 20 minutes at 1 hour and then at 1.40 hours 1 hour 40 minutes and then we say for the first 40 minutes we'll say that the car was moving at a constant speed of 140 for the next 40 minutes the car was moving at a constant speed of 150 and for the next last 40 minutes the car was moving at a constant speed of 180 so that is basically we, we are measuring a discrete data and at three instants but we are using this to interpolate the speed for the various so we are taking a step function so for the first 40 minutes the speed is taken as a constant 140 for the next 40 minutes 150 and for the last 40 minutes 180 and now you can calculate the total distance traveled for the entire two hours for the first 40 minutes it will be 2 by 3 into 140 for the next it will be uh, next 40 minutes at 150 speed so 2 by 3 into 150 and for the next at 180 so entire distance will be 2 by 3 into 140 plus 150 plus 180 so the total distance traveled after discretization will be 313.3 which is going to be a distance uh, which is uh, going to be quite close to the actual distance traveled okay in the first 40 minutes the car is actually not moving at 140 the car may be fluctuating between 130 and 150 but we are assuming that for the first so this this is what we call discretization and the next also we assume is moving at 140 next uh, in the next uh, at okay at 1 so it is basically 20 is the midpoint of the interval from 0 to 40 so we have measured it at that instant mm -hmm. and at this interval so it is something like uh, making a when we make the histogram we take this point and the interval 20 this side 20 this side so this is the first 40 then the second 40 would be 40 minutes to 1.20 so one hour is the midpoint of that so we measure it at the midpoint and this for the third one third is 120 to 2 hours so 140 is the midpoint of that Okay. So we, we measure it at the midpoint of the interval. First 40 minutes, we measure it at 20 minutes. Next 40 minutes, unke midpoint per, and then the last 40 minutes. And then we assume that for the first 40 minutes, the car has been traveling at this constant speed. So we make a step function, and we just calculate the total distance traveled by using this discretization. We, we are not measuring the speed. We are not, taking, we are not making the graph of the speed of the car at which it is moving. So this, this is going to be an approximate. If we actually travel and if the speed is being maintained for the first 40 hours around 140, so maybe 120 to 160 it could be, but uh, 160 for some instance, but in the mostly it has been say 130 to 150. In the second instance it could be 145 to 155. In the third phase it is maybe the road is smoother and we are going at a higher speed. So th this will give us an approximate calculation. In general, the problems that we tackle by numerical analysis, they are not very simple examples, but I have typically chosen these sim simple examples so that things are easy to understand. So, even in the last uh, example, there will be some error. So the study of errors forms an important and integral part of numerical analysis. So there are several ways in which errors get introduced in the solution of the problem. First is round off errors. Because we are doing uh, mathematics with finite precision, so at some stage, even if we are talking of 100 uh, decimal points of precision, even then, will be rounding off after after 100 decimal points and some error will creep in and then these errors when we are making these 
calculations again and again in iterative methods or even in direct methods because we are performing these calculations uh, a lot of steps are being there uh, being uh, involved and therefore these errors they, they get propagated so there is an error and then uh, there is an error and we add two terms with an error we multiply two terms uh, both of which are having errors so they get propagated so how much will be the error in the functional value so that's why the study of errors and increments is very very important when we study uh, numerical analysis we have uh, analytical methods uh, which use calculus but we do have uh, methods uh, numerical methods also by which we can minimize the errors in fact uh, a very funny situation occurred uh, with with my students answering 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 equals 0.99 it was a statistical class and these students and I had asked them to report all answers with which are accurate up to uh, four decimal places so in the calculations the final answer they got 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 and after that three or four of them they wrote 0.9999 and I was shocked I said you don't know how to add 1 by 3 and 2 by 3 and you know it is 1 how come you are getting the answer 0 0.9999 it was uh, an error to use calculators in the class what these students did they calculated 1 by 3 by using the calculator they calculated 1 by uh, 2 by 3 by using the calculator and added them and because I had told them that they have to write the solution which is accurate up to four decimal places they added 0 0.3333 plus 0 0.6666 uh, even if the calculator was giving them accuracy up to eight digits they, they just truncated the uh, they just forgot about what is after the fourth decimal place and they didn't even round off so they just added 0 0.3333 plus 0 0.6666 and got 0 0.9999 and they just forgot and uh, in fact uh, they may not even have done it I was thinking they have done this what they did was uh, they, they just added these numbers by using the calculator again they, they got 0 0.3333333 eight digits the, and then the next number they got 0 0.6666 and when they added they got 0 0.9999 up to correct up to eight decimal places because they were not adding one by three and two by three they were adding these numbers as decimals and the truncation it was a truncation error not even round off error so truncation error is the next type of error which we get and uh, you, you just forget about what is after a certain stage and these errors uh, add a lot to the error in the exact solution then we also have discretization error as you, as you must have seen in the uh, mileage problem of car you will not be getting the exact mileage traveled by the car if you are approximating the solution by discretizing the problem then uh, one more important concept in numerical analysis is uh, the concept of numerical stability what does it mean actually if an error for whatever reason does not grow too large during the calculations then you say that the algorithm is numerical stable if you change the data by a small amount and the problem changes by only a and the solution also changes by a small amount then you say that the problem is well conditioned and if any small error in the data grows up to give you a large error then we say that the problem is ill conditioned so let, let us just take these examples 